Um, so thanks for having me on. I don't want to um, confirm or, or anything the identity of the person, but there was an organizer and my understanding is she was walking uh, to her car blocks away from where um, a gathering was happening when a number of undercover vehicles pulled up and they were definitely targeting um, uh, this person specifically and uh, threw her onto the ground and she became unresponsive and the surrounding crowd um, witnessed the police with their knee in her back um, when she obviously was in strong need of medical attention and um, when I had arrived there, um, this person was unresponsive, laying in the middle of um, about 10 or 12 police officers that were uh, having their bikes acting as a barricade to keep out people, um, including medics, that were literally begging them to allow them to assess her and give her even the most minimal medical care, which is what they were neglecting to give her at that moment. And I saw a video that was posted to Instagram and it doesn't look like this activist was doing anything to, to provoke the police to have them tackle her or, uh, or anything. Do, do you know why this happened? Was there any explanation? Well, we know that no longer there, uh, we know that there's no longer like a prerequisite for cops to attack um, black people, people of color, specifically people that are politically active. And we've seen that in uh, the uprising since the murder of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd that um, that police have, have uh, you know, they need little uh, provocation to attack people. Um, there was a, uh, an activity happening at Curtis Hickson Park that was almost exactly mirroring the actions of a back the blue Tampa group as they call themselves um, that painted a mural unpermitted in the middle of downtown and took it upon themselves to block the street for several hours um, and paint an unpermitted mural and when a painting was going on in uh, Curtis Hickson Park police poured out of every corner and started violently violently arresting people and continued physically assaulting people once they were in custody inside of the jail at Orient Road. What do you know about the condition of the protester who was, uh, who was detained by police last night? I have no update except that um, while she was being assessed by medical personnel, which she did not receive on the scene whatsoever by police who stood by um, doing nothing while she was unresponsive for 10 minutes, um, that police entered uh, where she was getting treated at the hospital and um, and uh, booked her and took her fingerprints and she's being charged, although I don't want to speak exactly to what the charges are because I don't know exactly um, what they are, but I know that she's since been released. But I think it's um, a very, very troubling trend um, in what's happening with the police. I mean, this is nothing new with police targeting politically active people in our community, even targeting um, people of color and black people with extreme violence, um, you know, as we've seen again and again and again, but the issues that have been highlighted um, around the world since uh, George Floyd's murder and Breonna Taylor's, Taylor's murder have been um, very blatantly like captured on film again and again and again in Tampa and the city seems to be doing nothing about it, including increasing the police budget at a time when people all over the country are talking about defunding the police and diverting those resources to much, much, much needed trained professionals that can deal with these situations appropriately and compassionately. Desiree, what's the next step for activists? Uh, is there a, a large protest that's going to be happening this weekend in Tampa? I don't want to speak to that. I, I hope that these beautiful spontaneous gatherings continue happening where people come together and continue to highlight the issues because we are not going away. TPD can um, continue to thrust themselves in the spotlight and exhibit for themselves the violence that they um, subject people to in this community. Um, unarmed, politically active organizers who are trying to make our community better. And if they wish to continue doing that, we will continue to um, to be vocal about it and continue to amplify those issues to support our community. Well, Desiree Lynn, I want to thank you so much for coming on WMNF today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Take care.